now we have with us right here in the studio someone that I have known and admired for several years, Mr. Scott Beal, who is uh, the founder and CEO of Atlas Core. So Scott, hi. Good morning or good evening, depending on where you're watching. Good from. everything. Some good, people still haven't day. woken up. <laughs> Indeed. Still early morning on the West Coast. It is. But it we, is. we want them to wake up and feel the pain that we feel when we have to live stream the other way around and live stream stuff happening in New York. Exactly. From you know the Middle East, which is where I spend some of my time. But you founded an organization called Atlas Core. What does that do? Uh, so Atlas Core, first off, thank you very much for having me. I've been a, a fan and admirer of yours for so many years as well. So it's great to have the opportunity to come and to, to add our voice to this important uh, story about the social change sector and what's happening in our world today. Uh, so about 12 years ago, I started Atlas Core uh, with this vision of creating an opportunity for the world's best social change leaders to come and serve in the United States for a year both to develop their skills and expertise and experience, but also so that these diverse perspectives and backgrounds could strengthen organizations here in the United States. You know, when I first launched Atlas Core, I called it a reverse Peace Corps <laughs> some of my friends overseas. And they said, I like your idea, but why are you against peace? <laughs> and so I had to explain to those who didn't know the US Peace Corps that we're not anti-peace, but rather reversing the flow where traditionally uh, US citizens have gone to volunteer overseas or perhaps Brits with VSO or other, other programs but we wanted to find the world's best leaders around the world to come to the United States uh, based on a very simple premise that like all around the world there are smart, talented, passionate people who want to make the world a better place. The talent in this world is universally distributed, but opportunity is not. Mm -hmm. You know, as a white male born in the United States with a, with a U.S. passport, mm -hmm. I can go to 160 countries and not even need a visa. Uh, but the idea of somebody from Palestine or from Nigeria, or for that matter, even Mexico, to be able to cross borders and develop their skills and build their capacity is just much more difficult. So that's what we're trying to do at Atlas Core is take these incredible social change leaders, invest in them and build their skills and also learn from them and have them go back to their countries to address critical social issues all around the world. So interesting, you brought up opportunity and privilege and it's something that I think a lot of people um, on our social feed have been asking us over the past couple of days. Talking about change is so easy, but unless we recognize the privilege that those like us have of being able to actually talk about these things and create change, I think oftentimes we fail to recognize that privilege, which makes change seem so much more inaccessible to people around the world. And the one of the things that you mentioned that I think is really striking is this idea of capacity building. It's the right. idea that people have potential. You're not trying to build it for them. You're trying to help right. them, in essence, maximize what they already have. Tell us a bit more about how that capacity building really manifests into building these societies globally to step into the leadership that they already have. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so often people look at Atlas Core and say, oh, how wonderful, a, a leadership development program. Let's teach people overseas how to do things. And it's really, really missing the point and missing the larger picture and, and buying into a myth that exists within our sector. And the fact of the matter is people all around the world have skills, have talent, have capacity, uh, but what they don't have is an opportunity to further develop it, further refine it, uh, further connect it to resources and other people who, who share their beliefs and their, their desire to create change. And so it's not a matter of empowering a leader overseas by teaching them how to be an effective communicator or how to do monitoring evaluation, uh, but rather it's a matter of giving people the opportunity to grow. And in the case of Atlas Core, uh, through, through overseas service, which is really an effective way of, of developing one's skill. You know, it's uh, what, what the sector needs to realize, what the world needs to realize is that, you know, and, and I should say the private sector knows this. You know, when, when Bill Gates hires an engineer, he doesn't hire the best engineer in Seattle, he hires the best engineer in the world. But too often in the social change space, we're divided by, by visas and by, by financial barriers to prevent, well certainly prevent global service leadership, but also prevent international cooperation in a meaningful way that respects all sides. Uh, and so what we want to do is, is show folks that talent exists, there's, there's, there's skills that are there, and that what we need to do is invest these individuals to take it to a higher level. And that in that process, actually, that we can learn as well. Mm -hmm. And that when diverse voices and diverse perspectives come together, we all benefit from that, from that exchange of ideas. I think that's very fascinating in the sense of it is not just 
doing, helping people and doing things right. for people, but it's actually growing and developing capacity with people. And I know I've spoken to several of your Atlas Core fellows over the years, and it seems like they add as much richness that they bring with their experience and their culture and their understanding diver of diversity to the very organizations here in the United States that they embed into. And I think oftentimes with capacity building, we think of it as this one way right. exchange. And a lot of the work that you do is about cultural shift oh, sure. in the NGO space. And people might think it's interesting that we have you under the segment of Reimagine Earth. Um, but a big part of that for us is that how can we build a more sustainable Earth as an ecosystem if we don't start looking at all of these stakeholders that are rooted in essence into these problems but also rooted into the solutions so right, how do you right. start to think about what the future can look like when you do empower civil society all over the world to in essence not only share responsibility for solutions but mm -hmm. drive the solutions locally and be able to kind of share that knowledge globally yeah absolutely you know I assume that I was in the reimagining earth segment because our our logo is an upside down world. So we kind of. Why is it upside down? Well, because I think we need to change our perspective in the world to actually change the world. That if far too often we see the global south as a recipient of aid as opposed to a partner in development. And that we need to literally see not only challenges in a different way, but solutions in a different way as well. You know, growing up, I used to play chess all the time. And, and uh, for anybody who plays chess, they know if you turn the board around, you all of a sudden see, wow, I have more. Uh, weaknesses and strengths than I realized and my opponent may, or even my partner in some cases has different assets that I didn't realize as well that we need to look at the world differently if we want to begin to make a different impact in the world and that includes with social change leaders if we see folks in the global south or whatever term you want to use uh, to countries that are not your own as simply um, beneficiaries of aid mm -hmm. then then it's never gonna work it's never gonna work because what we need to do is unlock the skills and the resources of both sides, of, of countries that may be donating more, other countries that may be receiving more. We can all receive and we can all give, and only by doing both will we really be able to tackle systemic challenges that exist in this world. Only when we really unlock the skills and talent that exist locally and do it through a partnership will we really be able to make sustainable change. Absolutely, and I think there are a few people that are asking questions, and there is one question from Claudia who has come in, and she's asking about uh, speaker names. Just as a reminder, Claudia, you can find those on our wonderful website. But there is a question to you about how can someone who's looking to become a change leader actually start to be one? Uh, how, how do you develop that leadership capacity? And we will then close out with your advice to the world on how do you actually start to lead. Great. You know, I think the first step in developing yourself as a greater leader is just how you view yourself. And if you view yourself in that position of leadership, other people will begin to view you that way as well. And when you view yourself as that someone who has skills and has talent, you begin to seek out opportunities. I mean, it could be Atlas Core, or it could be even in the books that you read, or the people that you hang out with, in surrounding yourself by diverse individuals who have that crazy belief that change is possible as well. You need to believe in yourself first to be able to really go on that path towards greater leadership and greater social change. Because far too often in life, people won't believe in you. Mm -hmm. Far too often people will tell you that it can't be done. So if you don't start from a position of, of confidence and to a certain extent of faith that you can do it, then it's gonna be an impossible journey. But by taking that first step and then seeking out opportunities for, for training and investment and experience, investing in yourself through education or, or service, um, applying for jobs that people didn't think that you could actually do, uh, but you may be able to actually, may be able to tackle is, is a, a lifelong journey towards greater leadership and greater social change. So your advice is just do it. Get out there and lead. Thank you very much for being with us in the studio. Thank you. And so much.